hit it. Baby, one, two, three, four. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. You are not rocking with the best. It's not some baby. One time, still shining. Respect my swag. It don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. And this is another episode. A swingers after dark. It's time to get live. And this is your host. Nah, son, baby, 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 baby. Let's go, chat. Welcome to the Black Lifestyle Experience, and we are your hosts, KD and Jahari. It's me. And we are here to discuss the lifestyle on the Black side of town with the hopes of making it better. Now, today, we were supposed to be swinging in Atlanta, but uh, some things fell through with both of our, our guests, and it's unfortunate, but um, you know what? We're, we're a strong team at BLX, and we know a lot of people. So uh, we're going to move forward, and we were able to to uh, gather another host, another guest, and we're excited about that. Um, his name is Nason. Some of you may know him by Wavy, and um, he is a man about town, a man about the the country, a man about the world. He is the ultimate single male. He is. The interesting man at the party that I know you ladies are looking for. <laughs> and uh, we're going to chat with him about a number of things, being a single man on, in a lifestyle. Uh, he, like I said, he has traveled the country, so he's attended quite a few parties. So we're going to hear from him on that. And we have a lot of questions for him and it's going to be a very entertaining show. Absolutely. So without further ado, let's get it started. All right. What's going on, Wavy? Welcome, Wavy. Welcome, Nasan. How Nassan, are you today? Nasan, how you doing, brother? Who's good? I'm delicious. I'm delicious. <laughs> He's starting out the gate. <laughs> Ow. Well, well listen, man. For joining we, us. Yeah, we appreciate you jumping on the show uh, last minute. But, um, you know, as a true ultimate single male, you are ready for anything. So, um, so yeah. If, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. You know, I, know, I was thinking right. that. I was thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely so listen we want to get it started um we're going to ask you a few questions we co- we call this the the turn up session um so we we got some very interesting questions for you and, and hopes that you'll be completely honest but we know you are so we, we're going to catch you early and then we're going to get into some other things about some parties you've seen or uh, attended and um you know what the flavor was and you know what it was like being a single male and any suggestions you might have for some of the younger guys that's out here trying to be like you were a long time ago when I first met you. Yes. So, um, so yeah, so we're going to go ahead and take the lead and uh, we're going to ask you a few questions. So, so how did it begin? Out. Yeah. So do me a favor. Describe the moment you discovered you were a freak. Oh. How old were you? And what was the thought? Oh damn! That was a good. That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> good question. I, I I don't I don't really know. It was if anything, chicks was girls was freaky towards me. You know, mm-hmm. like this. I remember I was like in a second, sec first or second grade, and you know this this girl told me that she could make me scream. She could like I can make you scream. And, and wow. I was like horrified, you know what I'm saying? I was terrified. I didn't know. <laughs> That's seven years old, right? Seven or eight? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, super, and, and then I remember when I was younger than that, <laughs> these two older girls, they kept pulling down my pants. Mm-hmm. Not my pants, my shorts. It was like okay. I, I was literally, I was literally molested by two older chicks. Oh, they was man. like, I was like at least five or six, and they was wow. like 10 or 11. And my wow. homeboys, two of my homeboys, they were brothers. They in the background just standing there mm-hmm. while these girls just pulling down and I'm trying to fight back and like one of them like slapped me. Dang. So I'm trying to fight back. They pulling down my, you know, my my shorts. And after a while, they, they just ran away. But that was that was that was wow. Wow. But, but I, I think, know I, you were a freak. Yeah. But I think I think yeah, it's clear I, they were. <laughs> yeah, Clearly. I don't know if I could pinpoint when I was a freak, but I, I could pinpoint when I knew that I was attracted to women. Mm, okay. I remember I was I was three years old, and you know, my uncle was married at the time. Mm. 
The reason why I know this is because we were we were living in the projects, Cabrini Green housing projects in Chicago. Mm-hmm. So I, I think I spent the night over the house, and you know they have a son, my cousin. So I walked out the room one day. I walked out the room, and the way the hallway is shaped, it's like a T. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The bottom of the T, like a, the letter T. Mm-hmm. And the bottom of the T was my cousin's room. And then the left side of the T was my uncle and his wife's room. So mm-hmm. I walk out the room and then I bust a I bust a, a right. And as soon as I bust a right, my uncle's wife was behind me. And she mm-hmm. was wearing lingerie. Not mm-hmm. only she was wearing lingerie, she's a plus size woman. Oh. So I kept looking back. I, I kept looking back because I was intrigued. Like I'm like three years <laughs> old. I didn't know any concept of sexuality. So right. I kept looking back. I kept looking back. And um come to find out, I remember I remember my my uncle, my uh, his wife telling my uncle what I was doing. I kept looking back and he started laughing. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's why I remember that I not only I, I like women, but I also like plus size women. Mm-hmm. So okay. that's when I discovered my sexuality. As as far as freak, I don't I don't know. Maybe in high school when I used to like do phone sex with women and then they'll masturbate. Yeah. From you know the sound of my voice, so I I, I start from high school. Okay, oh man, there's a lot of details there, bro. Yeah, <laughs> high school. Junior, one of them. His high memory is uh, amazing. Wow, wow. He well, can remember uh, stuff. I, I see. Okay, three years old, <laughs> seven. <years. laughs> I know based on, based on what we, I know based on where we lived at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. So, describe your first swinger experience. But it, it was the masquerade March 5th. Mm. It was 2011. Yes, 2011. March 5th, it, it was the masquerade joint. Mm-hmm. And then I, I remember, you know, I, I, it was the Yahoo group. The Yahoo groups, you yeah. know, I put cherry liquor. No, no, that's that's how we came in. Oh. But as far as the end, they the one who told me about the mansion, um, chocolate cherry liquors. Mm-hmm. We was at the at the meet and greet. At Sylvia's in Harlem. That's how we knew about the mansion. So I, I had I was in the Yahoo group, couple hustlers Yahoo group, and then that's how I was able to find out the information. And I still remember the password. It was gumbo. Oh my god! <laughs> we don't do passwords anymore, do we? Yeah, people no. don't do passwords wow. anymore. And then you had your rules. You had you know, the the couple of hustlers had their rules. You know. No phones, take your shoes off, be discreet. And yeah, we, I have my mask that's yeah, long retired, that. my masquerade mask. Mm-hmm. And it was dope. I set it off. Like I was one of that. that was, I remember the first chick I ever played with in a lifestyle, too. So, oh, wow. yeah. And she's okay. a flight attendant now. So, I know you're talking about the Mile High Club. Yeah, she yeah. do. Oh, wow. <laughs> I know you're talking about, too. Wow. Okay. Um, so what is your sexual go-to must have? Like when you when you getting it in, like what 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 is it that you absolutely have to do or have done to you? Like full stop. It's gotta happen no matter who she is. It's funny because when I when I first came into the lifestyle, I vowed not to, you know, eat a chick out. You know, I, I vowed to not give head to a woman, mm-hmm. but I I amended that rule, you know, at, mm-hmm. after a few years. Mm-hmm. So that's one of them. It, it depends on it depends on a on a. I like to suck titties first. Mm. I like to suck titties first. So it's like foreplay, you know, get her neck, yeah. get her titties, okay. and then get it in. But right. I, she don't have to. She don't have to give me fellatio. Okay, Th- that's yeah. not. She don't have to because I'd be ready to go from the start. So yeah, it's really you know, sucking on her breasts to kick off everything. Is that, okay. Now, and plus, I got LED lights. If she goes to my room, I got like LED lights with the music playing. Wow. So you set the ambiance, the scenery. Yes, I got to set the tone. You got tone. it going on. You, you still in the feet? We're we, we not, we not having sex. It, it's an experience, you know? Mm. Are you still into feet? It depends on the woman because not every woman is into feet. Right. Mm. So it depends on her. But tickle so fancy. Mm. Oh, excuse me. Um... Oh, that was gross. Um, excuse me for that. <laughs> uh, we are live. <laughs> excuse me for that. All right, listen. So what's your porn search? When you go to a porn site, what, what is it, the, the words you're putting in the search engine? I put like 
Try ebony cream pies. Oh. I've seen that a few places. People answer with that. Yeah, okay, ebony now cream. the people who don't know what that is, that's none of us, but we, we I all, know. for the people who don't know what that is, <laughs> please describe that, please. That, that's pretty much when you shoot up the club. When you mm-hmm. when you you know bust a nut in them guts, you know just when you nut in the chicken and watch it, you know flow out, it out mm-hmm. like the Nile River, you know. Right, right, right. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but I, I've seen I've seen joints where some dudes they give double cream pies, like a dude with cream pie and a chick, and another dude will follow through and give her the second cream pie. So I've seen stuff like that. Okay. In flicks. Yeah. They be getting the question. Nasty. When yeah. you're at a lifestyle event and you want to yeah. set the tone to engage and play with a female, what is your approach? How do you mm-hmm. set it off as far yeah. as... Just, just have a conversation with her. Like, you're not at a party. You know, don't sexualize her and objectify mm-hmm. her. Yeah, she you know I want to smash. You know, <laughs> we're there for a reason, but don't make it obvious, you know? Right. You, you yeah. got to get to know who... You got to be interested in to her. You got to make her feel that you're interested in her and it's not all about you know just sex you know you, you gotta you gotta fuck her mind first you know the I true like su- the, the true seduction of foreplay is conversation right so mm-hmm. if the conversation is right you know you you, you got to wet that brain first mm-hmm. you know I like that right have you ever taken one for the team as far as being one of the only single males there and there's a whole bunch of not undesirable but women that if you saw on the street, you wouldn't necessarily look at. No, I never take one for the team. Mm-hmm. I, I, you can't, you can't extort my cock. You know what I'm saying? You, <laughs> oh you God, you said the C word. I hate the C word. <laughs> I, a, a lot of, a lot of chicks, a lot, a lot of women, especially black women, they don't like the C word. I like you know the B word. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. The big, my, the big my, black B uh, word. Oh, okay, I, I, I'm I'm gonna put the C and the D together. And Wait a minute, are we a G-rated show? Like, what the hell happened here? I keep like, forgetting we're not. Ooh. I like dick. I like the word Thank dick. You. I think we feel some kind of way. Listen, I'm gonna put the C and D together and say Chuck Dickens. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Mm. That's not say no. The, the Chuck, dick yeah, the fine. Chuck Dickens. Nah, dick the, is fine. I, I'm a writer, so I, I got to get literary uh. in this piece. You know what I'm saying? I, I can't be blatant. But yeah, so, you you can't bribe my dick. So you're an author of nine novels, right? Yes. And you're working on the tenth or the ninth? How does that work? I don't know which. The ninth. The ninth, the ninth, ninth is called. One. The ninth is called the promiscuous version. Now that's oh, interesting. Per, wait a minute. The promix, that's an promiscuous oxymoron. virgin. Yes, the promiscuous yes. virgin. Uh, okay, so um, what's briefly? What's that about? What, what? Well, the concept is pretty much about you know just because a woman have, you know. She has her sexual proclivities and a lifestyle. That doesn't mean that she shouldn't be respected. She should mm-hmm. always be respected and protected regardless, mm-hmm. regardless of her sexual habits. Mm-hmm. So that's where the promiscuous version comes in. It's like you treat her as if she's a virgin, you know, because mm-hmm. back in the day, even in certain cultures, like a, a woman, a, a woman, she's more value if she's a virgin. You know, if okay. she's a virgin, she's value and if she's not a virgin, she's considered not the marriage type. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? She's considered not the marriage type. But I seriously doubt that people in the lifestyle, especially women, are virgins. So the promiscuous version is, is pretty much, you know, just because a woman, she's no longer a virgin, that doesn't mean she's not marriage material. Absolutely. I agree. So that's where the promiscuous version right. comes in, the meaning so, of it. You could so be Mary Magdalene and Mother Teresa at the same time. Right. Mm-hmm. So where, where can we find this book? It's not out yet. I'm working it's on not, it. Okay, so it, it should on, be okay. out like March and April. Now, now your other books are they on Amazon? Let me pick them up. Yes, Kindle. Just Google me, not Sun. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, Roxy Kindle. Blue would like to know what is an absolute hard stop during play for you? For clarity, what is the one thing a woman can do in the middle of play that would make you hard stop and leave? No questions asked. Uh, if she some like an odor, you know, mm, it's, it's bad hygiene. Yeah, bad hygiene. You know, that's mm. that's that's a mm. hard stop. We not going. Mm. I'm like, y'all, I can't, I can't do this. You have know? you ever had to talk to someone about that? No, nah, I, I never have. Okay. I never have. It, it's before we we got to that point. I, I told myself, oh, nah, man. It, it, it's not going to work. Oh, so, yeah, really? that's the hard stop. Well, I mean, what was it like body odor or just yeah. down under? Like what happened? It's the body odor because some people, you know, what you are is what you eat. 
Yeah. So mm. your pH balance can manifest itself through your scent. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes you can smell it of uh, you can smell somebody through their pores. Right. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, you, you never know. They might have ate a hoagie before they came, you know, to the party or something like that. So, garlic you know, or fish. onions, garlic, onions, fish, yeah. or something like that. And that's coming through them. But you know, we got we gotta be conscious of those things. And that, I mean that goes for men too. That's everybody. That's yeah. possible. If you smell it, she has to smell yeah, it. Absolutely. But right. you know what? Sometimes people don't, but mm. you know, I, I think being honest and like Ooh, you're not really yeah, smelling you want to take a shower? Yeah, like, <laughs> you know, we could do this, but yeah, we we need to take that. Let's take a shower anymore. together. But I, I should not have to tell you that you, you, you should be able to you should be able to smell yourself before somebody could smell you. But what's yeah. natural to you might be offensive to someone else. Nah, right. you know you know when you're not living right. But there's some so, people who don't believe in wearing deodorant from their country, so when they come here. They don't see anything wrong with it for the rest nah, of them. No, nah, I, I know my scent. If if my scent doesn't agree with you, if my sense of smell, if my nostrils, you know, doesn't agree with yours, then mm. your scent, then that's nothing going on. Right. Yeah. right. So, so let's talk you. about your international travels and the lifestyle and the differences. We've been to Hito, what, four times? Yes. We've been on a cruise to Canada. That yeah. was a live cruise. We had those lookies at noon. Um, but within the United States, as you look at the South versus the North, I think we had this discussion earlier, KD. Mm, yeah. What are the major differences and which side do you find yourself more comfortable playing at? The, the, the South, um, the, the North is more liberal. Mm. You know, people, people, you know, they, they most likely to get it in, you know, in, in the North, the South. Even even when they're sexual liberated, they're still conservative because it, it's mm. the Bible Belt, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know. And the South, they still they still building up their scene, like in Florida and Georgia. It's not as prominent as the North, right. as like mm-hmm. between Connecticut and Virginia, mm-hmm. you know. But the South, it, it's more conservative, you know. It, it's mm-hmm. like like I can't I can't. I can't wear my sarongs now, South. Like I can't because mm. they they're gonna judge me. Like, make a long story short, I was in Atlanta, and you know, when I came to the party, I wore Tim's Army fatigues and a, a Jamaican tank top with the holes in it, and the women were feeling me. But the minute I dressed down with my sarongs and my short shorts, the mood changed. Like that mm. never happened to me. Like they weren't fucking with me at all. And my oh, really? homeboy was like, "Yes, my homeboy com- confirmed it." He was like, yo, as soon as you dress down, a lot of women not fucking with you. They were not fucking with you. Wait a minute, these and, are black women? Yes. And the funny the funny thing is the white women were more drawn to me. Of but course. the sisters, uh. and, and when I when I tell everybody that story, they're like, you should you should have known better. Because first of all, the South is more conservative. And second of all, mm. you in Atlanta. That's considered the black gay mecca. Mm. So I didn't put two and two together. They probably see me in my because I, I like to wear flamboyant clothes. Mm-hmm. I like to wear, you know, for my dress now. So right. they probably thought that, you know, I was kind of suspect based on what I was wearing. Right. So describe I didn't factor that in. Huh? Yes, describe, describe what it is. Yeah. Well, I, I wear sarongs. I wear see-through pants, like lounge pants. But the sarong, yeah. is, it wraps around your waist, right? Yeah, it it's wraps around like your skirt. waist. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like, like a skirt, right? Yeah. But it's sheer. Yes, I, I, may, I may wear, like, mesh pants. In other words, I don't wear the... I do not wear the male thought gear. I do not wear... <laughs> Flip flops and tank tops here. and basketball yeah. shorts. I, right. I don't do that. No. Well, you know, you kind of brought up something, and I'm kind of curious about it because I was going to ask tonight. Or in, in uh, I've had a discussion with a number of people. Are the sexuality lines getting grayed as far as like when you go to a party? You know, do you are you starting to see, um, like you walk up into a party, you might see bisexual men playing together or. To you know things like that, like because I'm not trying to drag out the question, but you know I'm hearing of some places in New York, like you know you you go in there and you just you just gonna see some things. So you know the, you know describe what you've been seeing if you've been seeing that. What's the no, wildest? I, I never thing? saw that. I, I saw a dude get pegged, and, and mm-hmm. that was a sight to see. For those who don't know what pegging means, it's mean when a woman has a strap on, and you know she fucks the dude from the back. 
Mm-hmm. So that's pegging. I saw that for the first time when I was in Indianapolis, and I was like, "Whoa!" Mm-hmm. A, I, was in, I was intrigued. Wow, because, that's what I felt. Oh, really? Yeah, I wow. never saw it before. You know what I'm saying? It was kind of, it, it, it was a sight to see. But I had to leave the room because it wasn't my cup of henny. But I, I thought it was interesting. <laughs> but no, nah, I, I don't. I don't. You see stuck it. around to see what was happening and say, "Oh, I'm out." Just say it for me. <laughs> yeah. I'm out. It's like that SpongeBob meme. You know? Okay, I'm out. What? You know? But what are men that stay? to watch it it was more so couples who stayed really yeah it was couples and they yeah, stayed it, to watch it yeah they stayed they, it, it was a sight because nobody is hardly you know you really don't see dudes get pegged at parties yeah. right. if a dude i've never bi- seen it done at a party i've, yeah, I've, I've never dude, seen it either if a dude is bisexual he's gonna you know hide it he's gonna masquerade it because mm-hmm. swing parties ls parties for the most part it caters to bisexual women and straight males mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to see a lot of bisexual dudes unless they hide it. You're not going to see gay dudes un- unless they hide it. Usually they party with their own circle. Mm-hmm. You know, and just people got to understand just because you're in a lifestyle, that doesn't mean everybody has the same kink. Right. Or That's everybody true. has the same sexuality. You got to right. get in where you fit in. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. That's true. That was a good answer, brother. Appreciate that. Indianapolis. <laughs> right. I'm still like, wow. I never would have figured that to be a place where they'd be that comfortable enough to yeah. go there. Yeah. But do you, do you, when you travel, do you have a hard time finding lifestyle events in, or do you pre-plan or do you just I, drop I in know. and say, yo, I'm here. Oh, you already know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do social media, social mm. media, social media is a gift and a curse mm-hmm. because you meet a lot of people, but a lot of people, it, it the lifestyle attracts people who are not vetted. Right. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It is. It's like an open, anybody, not for nothing, anybody could go to the LS party. Mm-hmm. And nine of the ten times, the host don't even know everybody who walked through them doors. Right. So it's a gift and a curse. It's it's a gift because you can meet a lot of people. It's a curse because it's no longer discreet. It's no longer exclusive. Mm-hmm. So it kind of waters down the scene. Right. Absolutely. You know, so, but yeah, that, that's a lifestyle scene everywhere. Especially Indianapolis. The Indiana, the Indiana and the Midwest lifestyle scene, I think it has hmm. the crime right now. It has the crown. Really? Yes. Really? Yes. I'm gonna yes. have to check it out. I'm gonna go yes. next. Yeah. Yes. In Chicago, you have Club Me for More. In mm-hmm. Indianapolis, you got Fuckcation. Mm-hmm. Kentucky. Right. I saw that. Kentucky, by the way, of Ohio, you got the Clubhouse, and you got in mm-hmm. Ohio. In Ohio, you have ECE and the Midwest Professional Swingers. Mm-hmm. So, are these large yeah. crowds or small and intimate? Oh, this large crowds. Everything is. I say to, from medium to large. So like hotel takeovers or yeah, that's or what it is now. Or, oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, hotel takeover. It's not yeah. like the mansion where you know it's a a nice size intimate crowd. Everybody mm-hmm. want to go to hotel takeovers. Mm-hmm. But do they play in a common area or do they just snatch people off to their room and it gets deserted after a while? They go to their rooms. That's that's one con. That's another yeah. con about hotel parties. Mm-hmm. You're not going to see everybody. Yeah. Like when you go to the mansion at a couple of hustlers event, you're going to see everybody because mm-hmm. everybody is in a basement. You're going to see everybody. But at hotel parties, you may not know somebody's there until checkout. Or Ooh. you may see somebody. You may see somebody at check in yeah. and, uh, and don't see that person again until Sunday until right. checkout. Right. And you're like, yo, where were you? Well, I didn't even know you were there. Right. Wow. That is People hiding in their rooms. Yeah. yeah. Now, we were talking to a brother um, on Friday in dallas and you know we were asking you know about 420 and um you know alcohol you know if it was a, an issue there but he said it's the pills and i i was really taken back by that answer molly stuff like that <laughs> pills like name them you just keep naming them oh my he, God. Just said, it's, he said bro it's the pills man it's not it's not the weed it's not the alcohol mm. that's that's killing the mood it's it's the pills so what's it like in the Midwest? Like, what's going on? Like, are brothers getting whiskey dick from drinking too much or, you know, stoned out they mind. Stoned out they mind from smoking weed or is it the pills there too? But it's, it's usually they have like a smoke, a smoke tent. Okay. You know, outside the hotel, they have like a smoke tent oh, where everybody okay. can get their chief on. Yeah, but I don't smoke. know about the pills because I don't need pills. Mm-hmm. All I need is a right. gallon of water and a six pack of lemon lime Gatorade and I'm good. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, gas station pills, they don't do anything for me or pills in general. Like, well, see, no, but he was talking about the drugs, though. He he wasn't talking about the, 
you know, the stuff you get in the gas station or the Viagra or the anything. Sex, like that. Uh, Somali. I can't think yeah, of all Somali, of them. Ecstasy and all ecstasy, that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't do that. Yeah. I just need. So you I didn't, you didn't see it, like any an issue with it either, though. Like you didn't see other people all hired up off it. No, not really. People. Okay. people Would you have known they, they were high like that? That's true. I didn't know people may be drunk or tipsy, but mm-hmm. I, I've never seen somebody just so sloppy. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. If anything, yeah. they may they may you know eat an edible and crash out in their room. If anything, yeah, that's happened to me before. Crash out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. right. That wow. has happened to me before. Okay. So you 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 go to hotel takeovers or do the hosts like create a way for people to meet each other, or is it just? Hey, you check in and like and a meet and do what greet you or do. social. But they have meet and greets Fridays. Mm-hmm. Okay. They got meet and greet Fridays. You know, you can mix and mingle and chop it up with people. And Saturday, you just got to get it in. But sometimes if they don't have a meet and greet Friday, it's going to put you at a disadvantage because yeah. you may not know everybody. Yeah. yeah. Or if you don't get there till Saturday, you really hope. Yeah. You yeah. may need a name tag yeah. or something. Right. Right. So, so I, bro- I think. I think they yeah. need me. I think if you're going to throw a hotel takeover, you need a meet and greet that Friday. Or yeah. more events throughout the, the weekend, like a, a pool party. Uh, let's have lunch together. Something where people have to come together at some point to mingle with each other, right? Oh, well, they do that because now, okay. you know, they, they mix in the BDSM element into yeah. swing parties. So they throw like seminars and exhibitions throughout the yeah. day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, did you get into BDSM at all? Or no, no, no. That's still, not my cup. I, I'll flog you, but it's yeah. not my cup of tea. I stay in my lane. So, otherwise, you don't know what the hell you're doing. So, just. <laughs> well, I know how to flog. Like, okay. that's easy. But as far yeah. as, like, the hardcore stuff, like, wax and fire and knife play. Nah, yeah. that's not. I'm not burning somebody. And then <laughs> you get me in trouble. <laughs> it takes a lot of skill and practice. Oh, that's right. To get yeah, to that I, point, I, people be people be like Mozart when it comes to the rope play tying knots. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm like the Boy Scout ain't got shit on y'all, you know. <laughs> We're going to an event this weekend, BDSM event. And he doesn't really engage; he just comes to support. Yeah, I just support in that dungeon mm. in a playhouse. Right, right. Okay, so what what type of equipment do you pack up or? What do you, in your bag? What's in your, your goodie bag? bag? What's in your swing bag? Describe that. It's for the I, night bag. <laughs> I, I'm asking because uh, there's somebody I'm going to help out, you know, and I, I rarely help the brothers out, like, specifically and tell them what to do. Um, but I'm going to help this guy out because I think he's got a future, a strong future. So what's what's in your in your goodie bag? What you bring to the party? Other well, of than course, dick. Uh, of course, <laughs> you need your face towels, your mm-hmm. own face towels. You need your peppermints. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know, that and, breath gotta be right. Yes, and you need the mouthwash so when you go down and you know get your eat on. Mm-hmm. Yes, you know because you can't you can't brush your teeth. Right. You know after you play because you know it could your gums. You know it, it could bust your gums and it could spread bacteria that way. Mm-hmm. So That's you should use point. mouthwash, and of course deodorant, cocoa butter, condoms, lube. condoms, skins, skins. You know, your your scented oils, mm-hmm. you know, of course your lube, you know, if, if she wants you to do that backdoor action, ow. Mm-hmm. So, and you know, of course your, your, your peppermint soap, your liquid peppermint soap. Right. You know, right. yeah, so that, that's, that's in my bag. And your hand sanitizer nowadays. Nowadays. Yeah, yeah so... Yeah, that, that's pretty much what's in the bag in the play. So bag. that brings me to the next point. Do you see in these different travel events or planned events any increased security measures for COVID or even just increased um, sanity measures or cleaning measures? Or do you see anything well, different they, other than before? They just check your temperature. Mm-hmm. It's pretty much the same. They just check your temperature to see if you're good. And then you have to sign a waiver and they write down your temperature. Mm, okay. Well, yeah, that's something. So that, yeah, but as, as far as security, I, I noticed that you know when I first came in the lifestyle, especially at the mansion in, in South Jersey, there was no security. It was just it was just right. the people police themselves. Right. So now that yeah. you know, yeah. So now that the lifestyle has expanded, mm-hmm. you have like twenty fifteen security detail people working mm-hmm. security, like a twenty that's man true. security detail working at at you know at, at the hotels you got dudes who are manning the floors you have dudes who are walking around see if you got a wristband 
You have dudes mm-hmm. who are standing post at all the exits so people won't try to, you know, sneak in. Mm-hmm. And you even have some dudes who check in at the at the overflow. Mm. Mm. So yeah, they don't play. You got security at the overflow now? That's yeah. interesting. Wow. That's, okay. yeah. don't but know. don't they disappear at a certain hour and it's like the wild, wild west deserted after a certain hour, mm. you're on your own. And they they the security still be on point. Maybe around somewhere. All right, everyone, please, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you share this to your page. Share this page so people can join in and chime in later. So, Wavy, you also were a known couple in the lifestyle for a number of years. Um, Do you feel your lifestyle experience is different as part of a couple and a group owner at the time, as opposed to being a single male? Well, when I was in a relationship, it was like I masqueraded. It felt like I was a single male. You know what I'm saying? Because what what I should have done first and foremost, when you get in a relationship, whether it's a a lifestyle relationship, not even a lifestyle relationship, whether you you're in a relationship and y'all in a lifestyle or about to get in a lifestyle, or even when you're not even a lifestyler, you could be vanilla or a civilian. Mm-hmm. You have to make sure you have to sit down and ask certain questions. You know, you have to vet your partner. You have to, mm. you have to be around that person to see if you even want to be with that person. Mm-hmm. And my mistake was is that, first of all, we rushed in the situation. We rushed in the relationship. Mm-hmm. We rushed in the situation. We really didn't have much in common outside of the mm-hmm. lifestyle, outside of swinging. So it was like everything was rushed to the point where, you know, it was like we wasn't moving in one accord. We weren't okay. really. We weren't we were not solid as a couple. Okay. So that's why even when I was in a relationship and a lifestyle, it felt like I was single. Mm. Interesting. So yeah, so it, it wasn't a difference. It was it really wasn't a difference. If if I do it all over again, mm-hmm. you know, we'll we'll fall back from the lifestyle. A unless, lot of people do that. <clears throat> yes, we'll fall back from the lifestyle unless we got our shit together. We on our P's and Q's, mm-hmm. cross our T's and dot our I's to the point where you know, where we have the Mount Rushmore of a relationship, which is trust, honesty, communication, and loyalty. Transparency. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and transparency. Mm-hmm. You know, so it was like you just freestyling it. It's like the difference between freestyling a song and writing a song that's composed from start to finish. Mm-hmm. You have a chorus, you have a hook, you have a bridge, mm-hmm. you know, you have another chorus, another bridge. You know, it's like the difference between me going into the studio and f- freestyling the song as opposed to me composing a song and then it's timeless mm. so a, a lot of people i noticed well a lot of people you know they get in a lifestyle they so gung-ho about being in a relationship to the point where they don't sit down with each other and say okay yeah. what do you want out of the lifestyle yeah. you know what do you want out of this relationship what do you want me to do that would you know that would add on to your life what do you mm. want out of life in general mm. people don't have them discussion people don't vet People talk about vetting people That's at parties. People don't, people don't even vet the people who they're in relationships with. They don't even know they meet. It just happens. Yeah, you listen, listen, each other is good. Let's do this. You're right. Yeah, listen, you got I, a fat see, ass, baby. Right. Right. Listen, that pussy I, good, seen, Ma. Let's be together. Mm-hmm. But you're right. Mm-hmm. You gotta have that conversation. I've seen, I've seen instances where people meet at check-in and then they check out, they're in a whole relationship. Mm. You know what oh, I'm saying? Wow. So, people, yeah, so people jump into a relationship and then you wonder why they broke work. up. You wonder mm-hmm. why they're separated. You wonder why they divorced because they didn't really get to know each other outside of the lifestyle. Right. If, right. If, if sex is your foundation, then it's going to do to fail. Mm-hmm. Right. So th- that's why we asked me that question. Is there's a difference? Yeah, you, you're more responsible. You're, you, you're responsible for you and your mate. Mm-hmm. But it was like, it didn't matter because we were like single. We were pretty mm-hmm. much single in a relationship. So your lifestyle rules when you were a couple were you do you and I do me? Did y'all discuss that at least? Yeah, we discussed. I don't okay. think we discussed that. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was like, it, it was. Wow. Yeah. I was, would you do it again? You said going forward, you would handle it differently. But yeah, is there I, possible? I it, first of all, you know, I have more patience. Mm-hmm. You know, especially when you deal with somebody who's highly emotional. You know what I'm saying? If, some, if somebody cries when they get angry, I got to get used to that because I'm emotionally unavailable. It's like, I don't mm-hmm. have the patience for that. You got to be mm-hmm. strong when you're around me. So I have no time for that. I have no time to coddle your emotions. Wow. Mm. 
Yeah, so you you have to be a whole. I don't want you to be my better half. <laughs> oh my god, you got to be a whole. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, I'm not that's saying why you we gotta got to be perfect. Yeah, I'm not saying you got to be perfect. You just got to be a whole. <laughs> wow, this is yeah, but but, a but, whole. but but what I tell people if if they in a relationship, whether they in a lifestyle outside the lifestyle. Make sure that listen. The lifestyle will expose everything that's fucked up about your relationship. All your insecurities, absolutely. It, it, it will unclose you, you, yeah. your relationship, and your significant other. Yeah. It will expose everything good, bad, and ugly about you and your relationship. Mm. You know, so it's it, when you're in that honeymoon stage in your relationship, everything yeah. is all good. But you know, the test of a, a relationship is when you could, when you still have deep feelings for somebody. When you know their flaws and imperfections, mm -hmm. the problem is when when you meet somebody in a lifestyle, you're fucking their fantasy. You mm -hmm. fucking the mm -hmm. fantasy of being with that person. But mm -hmm. then when you get with that okay. person, it's like, damn, I wasn't. It's like the rule changes. Yeah. You have responsibilities. You got to be around this person. You you're gonna see stuff that may turn you off. Yeah. But if you really like this person, if you really have affinity, great affinity for this person, you're gonna want to stay with them regardless. Mm -hmm. So what I see when you see a chick with a fat ass and big titties and she look mm -hmm. good or you may see a dude who's packing he got swag that's all good but what's going to happen when you see a side of that person that may turn you off or mm -hmm. when you see a certain personality trait mm -hmm. that make you put that may put you on pause are you going to work right. through that or are you going to say nah i can't i can't deal with this person anymore so you know this is or just ignore it, it. <clears throat> yeah or work, or work it, right? with it well, I mean, that's what a lot of people do. They're like, mm. oh, oh, shit, he's got great dick. I'm going to ignore all the other yeah, bullshit. So, I'm so a that, <laughs> Just keep so, fucking so, me, baby. Yeah, that's it. Don't talk. <laughs> yeah, so that's why it's like relationships nowadays, whether it's in a lifestyle or in a dominant society, it's like fast food. Because yeah. especially with microwave. Media, I call it microwave. Yeah, right? microwave. Shit, mini yeah. rice. You know what I'm saying? You put yeah. the put the water in the, in, a, in the rice and put it in the microwave. Instant and, meal. Yeah, right. instant I've meal. I've been there a time or two. <laughs> yeah, especially in social media. You on social media where you have a lot of you have a lot of stimulus and you have a lot of options. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a lot of options, whether it's male or woman, male, female, man, woman, whatever the case may be, gay, straight, bisexual, mm -hmm. pansexual, it doesn't matter. You have a lot of options. So that's another thing. When you get in a relationship, cut off your social media. Mm -hmm. Unless unless you're an entrepreneur, I can understand that, but fall back from social media and work. Mm. with your relationship. your relationship to the point where a lot of people can't stomach a lot like like when when we when you and Nigel Harvey we came into the lifestyle together mm -hmm. I couldn't stomach seeing you play with somebody mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying because a lot of we're not robots a lot of people say well you know if you're jealous or envious you're mm -hmm. not lifestyle well jealousy and envy that's a natural feeling mm -hmm. but the thing is not do, do not allow jealousy and envy consume you to the mm. point where you can't control it, to the point where you sabotage yourself, your name, your reputation, as well as your mates. You so you have to put that under lock and key. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You have to but control we, self. Yeah. You got to be the master of self yeah. first before you get into the relationship. That's why I say I want to hold. I want to see if you have self mastery. <laughs> Holy crap. You know what I'm saying? You got to be a But then would that hold be a problem when you're really in love with her? She's being a hold with everybody? No, I say a whole. You got to be a whole person, one hundred percent. Oh, whole. whole you said whole. Yeah, a whole. Like not a whole. Whole, whole. Yeah, you got to be a whole. But but hey, you know, it, it's like that. You you. I, I don't have a problem. You know, she she could be. You know, like I said, she could be Mother Teresa and Mary Magdalene. You know, she mm. could be classy on the streets, but a freak under the sheets. You feel me? Right, so right. it's not what, what everyone doing. is looking for. But mm. it's not what you do. It's how you go about doing it. Right. You feel me? Do things in matter in moderation. It, it, it can't be heavy handed. So you have to know yourself. You have to know, you have to be honest with yourself and know what self and know what triggers you. Mm. You feel me? Start if 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 you if you never saw your significant other play with somebody, start with soft swapping. Right. You know, you just touching, you just going through the motions, touching, you know, probably, you know, finger fucking and yeah. masturbating, this, that, and that, and then graduate. Okay. You feel me to the point where you're sense. comfortable with seeing your mate have sex with somebody else. So it it's bangs some, out. Yeah, some people don't <laughs> give a fuck. Some people they they automatically wired. Some people get off on seeing yeah, their mate. Yeah, a lot. Get I, the men I choose, I, I choose yeah. those kind of men. Yeah. Yeah. So it. So that's what I'm saying. You need to vet your partner. Mm -hmm. See what type of partner right. you have, so you can know how to move. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Now, real quick, what do you, what do you think? Because um, we're going to, you gave us a lot of information today. Yeah. So, what, you know, our goal is always to, you know, try to make the lifestyle better in the black community because it's, man, we could go on forever and, mm-hmm. and, and talk about what, what needs to improve. In your opinion, what would make the most impact? If you was able to change it today, what would make the most impact in the black lifestyle community? Well, you know, the the, the events, I don't, I don't like to count people's money. Right. I'm going to say that first and foremost. And it, it goes back to what I said. It's not what you do. It's how you go about doing it. I, I have a problem with people making money in a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. if you're gonna, I, I'm gonna say this: if you're gonna throw a rent party, don't make it apparent. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, because I've seen, I've seen, I've seen group owners. They just allow any and everybody in, and then when mm-hmm. you called them out on it, you're like, "Well, they paid their money." So mm-hmm. I, I think a lot of group owners need to hold themselves accountable mm-hmm. and just not allow any and everybody at their events. It, there's nothing wrong mm-hmm. with starting small, and there's nothing wrong with excommunicating right. somebody, blackballing somebody. If you see them do some nut shit, we talked about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Everybody, you know what I'm saying? It's like some people may say, "Well, you know, they didn't act up at my party, or I, mm-hmm. I don't have a problem with them because I'm they cool didn't do with this them." To me. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, you know, I, I blackball my mama if I see her do some fuck shit. Oh, so, that's right. You know, you, you have to be a leader. You know right. How, right. how much? You know, you know what they say. You know, to whom is given much is required. Mm-hmm. So you have to be a leader. If you call, listen, a lot of people, they want the adulation and the status of being a group owner, but they don't want the responsibility and accountability right. to make sure that everybody at their events are safe and everybody right. at, are at least close to the same wavelength to the right. point where you don't need, you don't have a lot of beef at your events because the reason mm-hmm. why you have a lot of beef and disputes because you have this, this gumbo of people with different personalities and different mm-hmm. agendas mm-hmm. to the point where when they state their opinion, it's like World War III. Right. So so what I would do is I would start from scratch. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I would, I would get a few couples and singles and work from there. Mm-hmm. You feel mm-hmm. it's like the, it's like the, the reverse pyramid, a mm-hmm. pyramid upside down. You start small and, and then grow. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, that's, that's fair enough, man. Well, you know what? Listen, we, we, we traveled the country with you. We traveled the world with you. We, we got your opinion on, on single men, single women, couples, you know, parties just in general, you know, but first, you know, I mean, we've already thanked you, but we're, we're going to thank you again yeah. for, for coming through. Um, thanks to Hart for reaching out to him. That's my brody. Um, absolutely. And, I hired uh, him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to give, give a nugget. I, I want to give a jewel yeah, to go ahead. single I want to give a jewel to single men right quick. You know, when, when, when you're at a swing party, you know, don't have expectations because mm. expectation is the mother of disappointment. Because right. I remember mm. the first time I, I went to to the to the mansion and I was like, yo, why why people not fucking? Why everybody? That was my first party. Mm. I'm thinking people going to fuck off the rip. Mm. So I'm like, why people not fucking? Why everybody sitting around and, you know, my man pulled me to the side. I was like, yo, chill, you know, just, 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 you know, just relax, you mm-hmm. know, just soak in the atmosphere. So mm-hmm. when you're a single man, don't expect sex and just talk to a woman like you would at the church. But then again, a lot of dudes <laughs> have no common sense and mm-hmm. no gift for gab and no pizzazz. The they don't know how to communicate with women. It, right. Listen, you know what kills me? You have a lot of dudes, they are social media. So they have all this time to come up with some clever shit only to send a dick pic. Mm. It's like you can't say all the days mm. to women. Yeah. I'm not talking about yeah. me sending it right. to me. I'm talking about sending it to, to yeah. women. Right. We yeah. got so I'm it. like, you have all this time to think of some clever shit mm. that you still you you Mac listen, you're supposed to Mac from the face, not from the waist. But right. but a lot of dudes, they don't know how to talk to women. And you uh-huh. can tell which dude got ass before the lifestyle uh-huh. or before, you know, they got ass in high school as opposed to them being grown. Right. So you knew how to carry yourself because the person you were in the past makes you the person in the present, mm-hmm. you know? So you know who was that dude and who wasn't based on how they carry themselves and based on how they talk to women. Because if, if you talk, if you put the humanity and swinging and parties, she's going to appreciate you more because she have a bunch of, she already have a bunch of thirsty, thirsty motherfuckers trying to holler at her. Mm-hmm. So right. if you come at her different and you see where her mind is at, she may not fuck you at that party, but the next time she see you, 
she may want to fuck you then because she's seeing how you, you move. Said, Casey. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's seeing how you yeah. move, especially, Absolutely. especially, especially when she, when she sees you at other parties or even the stuff that you post. Yeah, you know, yeah. just you know, you know, they say you know, I, I don't want to go on and on, but you know what they say? They say you know, you know, if you want to play with somebody, the second you see them and the minute mm -hmm. that you speak to them, but I always tell dudes. Even if a chick want to fuck you then, that doesn't mean she's going to do it right then and there. Right. So sometimes you got to be patient. And you know what they say about patience? Patience is a bitter tree whose fruits mm. are sweet. So mm. sometimes sometimes you got to lose the battle to win the war, so to speak. Right. So just because she's not going to fuck you then. Listen, that's when chicks, that's when times when chicks, I didn't even think they were feeling me. And then at the next party, they was like, yo, what's up? You ready? Because they yeah. watched you. Yeah. 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 And, 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 yeah. And, and it's all about the mood. Because just because you were at a swing party, that doesn't mean you want to play because right. they may not be feeling it. You may have the intentions to play or you may not even have the intentions to play. But mm -hmm. just because the mood and the ambiance is on point, you're like, yo, I'm ready to get it in. Right, right, so, right, right. Yeah. So okay. just, just go with the flow. All right. Well, you know what, man? That's good advice. Very good. Advice. And real good, man. We appreciate that input. And, um, you know, just as a reminder, you know, we are heading into the holiday season and. I know Jahari. I know you. Uh, you got some things to say about that, as far as um, you know, how depression. people are feeling around that. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. guys. Depression is real. If you feel something ain't right, something ain't right. Get around people. Talk yeah. to people. Don't do this alone. Because these holidays, and then with COVID taking family members, this is going to be a rough holiday season. Mm -hmm. So you guys reach out to those you haven't spoken to in a long time. Try to be kind to people. You never know. I've had many people say you smiled at me and it made my day. Little things like that go a long way when someone is about two seconds from ending it. Right. Just keep that in mind, everybody. Be kind yeah. to everyone and be kind to yourself. Yeah, definitely reach out. Even you know, I've made a lot of friends over the years. You know, through this, you know, parties and and whatnot. And mm -hmm. definitely reach out to people. And just because you think somebody is doing well, it doesn't mean they got a turkey on their on the, on the table. So, you know, reach out, invite people over if you can. And you know, if they don't have somewhere to go. And, um, you know, take care of yourself. So, yeah, no, I appreciate that, Jahari, for bringing that up because that's real. That's it really real. is. Yeah, yeah. And so. mental illness is a whole other issue that's yeah. always going on. So just yeah. keep in mind what you say and what you do can affect other people in ways you have no idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like I say, try to be kind. Okay. And, I, and a lot of people in the LS, I think they low-key have mental illnesses. A lot. They that's say one in five people in New York State have a mental illness. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and, you, and you see how they... You see how they carry conflict. A lot of people got pissed yes. for conflict re resolution skills. Right. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Instead of like like KD, if you and I have issues, I'm gonna go to you first. I'm gonna be diplomatic mm -hmm. first. I'm I'm not gonna because my thing is if we have a dispute and it goes on the internet, I no longer wanna fuck with you. Mm -hmm. Right. Because that shows me what the type of person you are. Mm -hmm. And if something happens to you, then if something unfortunate happens to you. I don't want to go to somebody precinct and get debriefed because they think I got something to do with it because you put not mm -hmm. beef on blast in public. So I'm mm -hmm. the type of person, I'm like, yo, you can have that. I don't want to do it. You deal can't with take you. it back once you but put it out. Exactly. There. And that's the times when I had issues with people in a lifestyle, you wouldn't have known we had issues because we had a, a, a private discussion and we squashed it. So if you seen us together, you wouldn't have known that we had issues because it wasn't that serious in the first place. A lot of people, when they make their beef public, they make a uh, uh, a mountain out of a molehill to the point where it's and it's it's not repairable. repairable. Yes, exactly. Beyond repair, it's something right. that you could have fixed. Now it's broken beyond repair. Mm -hmm. And that goes for breakups too. All of that. Yeah. Once you make it public, you can't fix it now. Do that behind the scenes. Yeah. But what I did, what I did during the pandemic, I had reached out to my you know ex to see if she was good because mm -hmm. she's a leukemia survivor, and you know if you have like underlying conditions. You careful. know, she she actually had COVID and survived it, so she's All good. Right. But I reached out to her, you know, and said, "Yo, are you good?" This that the third, and she asked me the same. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you you could be cool with somebody without being in their life, right? right. Cool right. from a distance. Right. Yeah, you can love somebody <laughs> from a distance. Yeah. You don't need to be. You don't need to fuck with them on the every day. You can love somebody from a distance. Right. Well, that's you know what that's important. That's important to say. We're gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Listen, um, listen. I, 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 I can go to two oh, hours, here we go. Three hours, <laughs> yeah, we man, gotta we get you back. Well. We, just gonna have to we gotta you guys, get him man, back. This is too much. Is, but hey, again, man, we appreciate it. I, I knew it was gonna be interesting dialogue, and you know, I know we discussed 
having you on the show. We just, you know, we, it just it just didn't happen as soon as we wanted. But hey, you know what? It works out. So I, pre- I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you. And we're definitely going to uh, have you on again. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll announce you. We'll do all that stuff and make sure, you know, everybody's tuning in. But, you know, everybody, please um, share this this podcast. Um, share it with everyone you can. Uh, we got some good information on there for Absolutely. single men uh, traveling the country, different swing events and things like that. Um, Nate's son is, the, is definitely a guru. So again, we appreciate it, and we're going to close this out. I think we made the uh, the lifestyle a little bit better on the black I side of town. So, so all right, let's, 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 let's keep yeah, it moving. Yes, I need to get back on so I can talk about you know the upcoming book and also my chronicles of the mansion of South Jersey. Oh I'm gosh, not gonna say, we I'm can not go say all right. but I, I got a lot of stories to tell. I got a lot of yeah, okay. a, a lot of stuff that stayed with me for years. Right. So, okay. Yeah. All right, we're, we're going to definitely do that. All right. All right, cool. But you know what? Hey, appreciate your time. All right. Make the lifestyle better for everybody. All right. Let's make it happen. Thank you. Bye-bye. Peace.